Heavenly Father, we thank you. We magnify your name. Father, we pause tomorrow. We pause all worries. And we focus on you, Lord. Father, I pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. God, I decrease so that the word of God, oh, that the word of God may increase into the ears of these your precious people. Father, your word says it will not return to you null nor void. Therefore, we thank you in advance for answers. We thank you in advance for deliverance. We thank you in advance for breakthroughs, manifestation of your word. And Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every row, every, every home, every household, every television screen, every computer screen, every mobile device. Have your way. Speak a word that can change a thousand generations. We are yielded to the word of God. And Father, we're so thankful for this holy interaction. The word of God in the heart of man. And Father, when those two marry and we'll yield it to your word, yield it to our covenant with you, yield it to your commandments. Father, we are a blessed people. We adore you, Lord. We give you all the honor. We give you all of the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, oh, let's shout about that one time. Look, I ain't did this in so long. I want you to turn to your left and just elbow bump somebody. Give them an elbow bump. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of God. Hallelujah. Well, we're in relationships. Uh, today is relationships part two. Um, we're just laying a foundation before we get into marriage and before we get into member and pastor, before we get into co-member, co-member, before we get into mother, daughter, mother, kids, mother, son, father, son, family. Before we get into all of that, we're laying a foundation on how relationships work and what better place to see that <coughs> than Jesus and the Father. What better place to see that than Jesus and the Father? Now, we're going to open up here. Uh, we're going to open up. I want to read this to you. <clears throat> Stop editing your prayers for sophistication. Simply tell God what you, what's, what's going on with you. You need help? Tell, say, God, I need your help. <laughs> if, you, if you're fearful, say, God, I'm fearful. If you don't know what to do, say, Lord, I don't know what to do, which way to go. I don't know what to do. But don't edit your prayers for sophistication. And you're not being honest with yourself and honest with God. Now, in relationships, you got to get honest. You got to get honest. I've had my honest moment uh, with my kids where, you know, they laid out, Here, here's what we feel you messed up. You know, here's what we feel you went wrong. And it was a rough moment. But I had to be honest with myself because, you know, y y you have to realize this. You, you, you're, our kids, they inherit the blessing and all of that stuff, the good things, but they also inherit the trauma that we put them through sometimes. And most of that trauma comes through broken relationships. Broken relationships. Where's granddaddy? You ain't got no granddaddy. Where's grandma? You, you don't have one. You, you, where, where you don't have one. And it's like, man, alive. And we don't realize that we're trying to substitute our love, but, but at the same time we're doing that, loving them, taking care of them, rearing them, feeding them, there's, there's trauma happening in them. And they want to know why. They want to know what's up. So at some point you got, you, you got to talk to them and you got to let them know that. Now, my kids just flat out told me, uh, uh, Dad, I'm just going to say this to you. Uh, we're going to say this to you. Uh, <laughs> you, 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 you. You barely let you know, any of our friends outside of church come to the house. You barely did that. Uh, the good people, um, they weren't bad people, but you, you barely did that, uh, which was true. And, 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 and they were like, you know, and, and then when our church friends begin to, you know, go different ways and, 
get deployed with the military and all this kind of stuff. We looked up at 11th and 12th, 11th, 11th and 12th grade, and we was like, man, <laughs> where's everybody at? And I said, you know what? I made a mistake right there. I made a mistake right there in our relationship. Because Zari was like, I, I, I had so many friends outside of church, good friends. Of course, you monitor that. But, 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 but for some reason, you know, they didn't come to the sleepover. You said, Dad, this is one thing. You're a great father, so on and so forth. But guess what? Uh, how many people know God, God's in the do-over business? He's in the do-over business. I told him, I said, look, you, you and the young adults, whatever y'all want to do, y'all want to get together and come over here, I, I can cook. Uh, 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 whatever you want to do, you want to theater night, whatever you want to do in the backyard, whatever you want to do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. What is that? I'm admitting that I messed up right there. And guess what? I want to make it right. I want to make it right. So you're going to hear some things, you're going to hear some things that boils up in you that says, you know what, man, I could have did that better in that relationship. I could have handled that better right there. And sometimes our kids are they're not angry, they're just almost confused because they see you with outside relationships outside the church. <laughs> but when it comes to them, it's like, ah, 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 ah. And, 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 and the Lord will caution, the Lord will caution you, be careful. Be careful that you don't shut down your kids' witness of Christ to others outside of the church. So you gotta have confidence in them disseminating Christ out. You gotta have confidence in the seed you put in them to bring their friends to the Lord. We gotta have confidence in them to lead those kids to the light. Amen? Amen. Why? The word is real. And the word is real in them. Amen? Boys, quiet in the house of God. Good God Almighty. Listen, look, just don't edit your prayers for sophistication concerning your relationships. Just say help. I need some help. I could, I, I, I could have missed this, God. God, am I missing it here? God, am I being too prideful here? That's a simple prayer. Lord, open my eyes. I could have missed it right here. Lord, open my eyes. I, I may be prideful right here. Lord, open my eyes. I could have missed it back there in that relationship. But I can tell you this. Most of the time, most of the time in relationships, it is not the people who bring down the relationship. It's the suggestion of the enemy in people's ears that bring down the relationship. And guess what? We let it stop right there instead of opening our mouths and talking. Hey, I know, I know you love me, but you know, this is how I felt. Hey, I, 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 know you, I, I know you're for me, but this is how I felt. That's what we have to start doing in our relationships as, as believers. Amen? Amen. Now, <clears throat> hmm. in your notes, I want you to write this down. Our hearts can't be the headquarters for hate. Can't be. Simply can't be. Regardless of what they said, what they did, as a believer, your heart cannot be the headquarter for hate. You can't let it rest there. You can't let it reside there. You can't let it hang out there. You can't let it abide there. you got to have the love of God shed abroad in your heart. So it can't be the headquarter for hate. And you got to teach your kids this. Because kids, kids can go through some brutal stuff in school and begin to just hate to go to school or hate a certain group of people. It cannot be the headquarter, headquarters for hate. Our hearts just can't be. Now, somebody says, I don't, I don't know about all that. Let's go to Proverbs real quick. Uh, Proverbs 6. Proverbs, Proverbs 6 real quick. Uh, this weather is wild. I think Wednesday or Thursday, the, the highest 69. For good God am I. Uh, let's see. Glory to God. Proverbs uh, chapter 6. And we're talking about relationships. Verse 16. These six things, somebody say six things. <laughs> Does the Lord hate? Now you got to open your ears now. Does the Lord hate? Seven are an abomination unto him. Number one. A proud look. He hates it. He hates it when we as believers carry ourselves with this level of self-importance that I'm here and you're there. He hates it. He hates it when we, when we, when we 
take his blessing or the profit he's bringing in and, 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 and clothe ourselves or dress ourselves or, or, or get in a certain car or a certain house and feel like we're above everybody else. He says, that's a proud look. I don't like it. It's a proud look. He says, a lying tongue. How many people have lied this year? Rest of you will just cast out lying demons. <laughs> my God, you'll find yourself telling a little subtle lie, and it's like, uh, I'll tell you a little subtle lie. Hey, did you get my text? No, I didn't get it. Yes, you did. <laughs> hey, did you see the email I sent? No, nah, I got to go check it. You're, you're lying. You're lying. I says, I hate that. Just tell the truth. Yeah, I looked at it and totally forgot about it. Just happened to me. My wife came in and says, hey, you, you, did you get my text? I said, yeah. I, my God, I responded, but I responded to the family thread. And I didn't respond to, her, respond to her individually. And uh, I looked down. I said, yeah, 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 I'm responding. I looked right at it. And, said, and, and, and the Holy Spirit said, no, you didn't. <laughs> a lying tongue. See, believers think that, that we sin when it's drastic. That's when we really get before the Lord and get on our face. When it's it's got to be drastic before we feel like we really got to get this together. He said, no, no, no. I hate the lying tongue. The lying tongue. You know, when your spouse asks you, hey, what card did you use? I didn't use no card. Did you use a credit card for that? No, I didn't. I didn't uh. Like he can't or she can't go online and look and see that you did it. Just go ahead and tell the truth. God says, I don't like a lying tongue. In relationships, it ruins it. <clears throat> uh, hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. I totally believe in this. Keep your hands off of human beings in relationships. If it ain't your wife or your children, Keep your hands, your husband, keep your hands off of human beings. You know, believers can get in an argument. Believers can have disagreements. Believers can, man, they can throw socks at one another. But you can't put your hands on a human being and not expect that to affect that relationship. I say, I say, I say, in relationships, you cannot put your hands on that human being and not expect that to affect your relationships. Well, I was in the heat of the moment and, and his head just looked, his head just looked like the right place for me to land the palm of my hand. And I was in the heat of the moment and I just, I just hauled off and I just popped him in the back of his head. Like, who are you talking to? Go over there and sit down somewhere. And you know what? I, well, you know, you, you know, it's like I was just in the heat of the moment. Listen, in the heat of the moment, you need to curtail your passions through the Holy Spirit and watch this, suspend your flesh for the moment. We're going to talk about that. In relationships, you got to learn how to suspend your flesh and employ the love of God in the heat of the moment because the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. You can do it right there in the heat of the moment. But we don't want to suspend our flesh in relationships. We want to react. When I'm five foot two and he's six foot two, it didn't hurt him. Probably didn't hurt him. It hurt his heart, though. It began to affect, affect his heart. I can promise you that. He ain't going to find nothing better out there than me. Well, I tell you what, keep doing that. Keep doing that. <clears throat> oh, boy, it's thick up in here. I told you it was going to get thick. He says, a heart that desires wicked imaginations, devise, deviseth wicked imaginations. He says, I hate that heart. Just to sit and just plot bad stuff on people. He says, I hate that. Just don't do it. We cannot do it in relationships. Be brave enough in a relationship when somebody say something off the wall and say, nope, you're wrong, that's not right. You're wrong, that's not right. You're absolutely wrong, that's not right. I can't tell you the amount of relationships from my previous church where I had to say that. I didn't care how close we was. You're not going to say that. You're not going to hint to it. You're not going to allude to it. You are not going to say that because what you're telling me is I'm next. You got a problem with him? Well, I know I'm next. <laughs> I know I'm next, and guess what? Trust begins to erode. So we got to start standing up for healthy relationships in the church and in our families when we can't do it amongst our siblings. Well, she ain't here, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and address this. She ain't here, you know. She, wait a minute. No, get her on three way, and let's go ahead and address this. That's how you address relationships, and you don't devise wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift and running to mischief. I tell you something in church, boy, when a sheep smell blood, they'll take off with it. Hey, did you know so-and-so-and-so? Hey, I heard it, but I, I, I don't quite have the details. I have it for you later on this evening, though. <laughs> My God, 
sound like we got a TMZ ministry in the church. <laughs> you know, gossip has to stop with us. It has to stop. It just simply has to stop. And you'll be surprised how much they respect you after that. Respect what? Your ears. I got so mad. Do you remember, you remember uh, <clears throat> when David's, David's, when Saul was trying to kill David? And some of David's guys came across him and, 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 and did what they did to Saul. And, and, and David took out his thing and hacked the guy up, took out his machete and hacked the guy up. It, 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 they're like, surely you wanted us to do this because Saul was trying to kill you, David. And David looked at them like, do you? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? No way. No way. We've got to stand up for healthy relationships. And nothing can destroy a relationship quicker than a little hintful seed that you don't address. You're not brave enough in your relationship to do it. <laughs> we got to have bravery as believers. God wants us to stand up for one another and do what's right for one another. And for the sake of Christ being exalted in that relationship, in that atmosphere, we have got to push back against all of the devil's devices that tries to drop seeds and destroy relationships. That's why if you're talking to a teenager and their parents say, well, my parents had me doing this, 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 well, do what your parents say. Well, I'm a youth leader. I got a little bit more wisdom here. No, 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 no. No, you don't. The parents said X, Y, and Z, but you dropped that little seed. Then all of a sudden, they're looking at the parents side-eyed, you know, when they get home. We can't do it. He says, don't run to mischief. Don't, 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 don't do that. He says, verse 19, a false witness. And what does this false witness do? Speak lies. And what do they do? Sow discord among the brethren. Sow discord among the brethren. Sow discord among the brethren. I got a covenant brother. He doesn't go to this church. But here's what here, he and I. He and I made a covenant. I said, I say, let me tell you this. He said, well, let me tell you this. You are not going to win dishonoring him. It's not going to happen. It's my pastor, leader of this church. You're not going to win that. And I said, you're not going to win it. And we just knew, look, there's a line here. You're not going to win that battle. We'll go like this before that happens. You're not going to win that battle. We're going to address one another. Somebody says, why do you use that kind of relationship? Because you relax the most with what I'm talking about in your covenant relationships. You let your guards down and little things seep out. And guess what? It's mischief. It's divisive. It's a bad seed in you. I'll tell you what, you know, when it comes to your heart, people have to respect the nature and the power of their words in your life. Because if you don't deal with them, that heart does not discriminate. It will take that little seed in, and now you got a little side eye. And you don't even know what's going on. Well, I'll tell you what's going on. You should address that thing on that text. You should address that thing when they said that. Why? You have a, you, you have, you have a divine assignment to protect relationships for Christ and keep people going towards the things of God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Oh, he hates them. He hates them. He hates them. He hates them. False witnesses that speak lies, you know, sows discord among the brethren. You know, if you got multiple kids, want to run downstairs and say, you know, I'm going to beat all of y'all to it. <laughs> and I'm going to drop this bomb on mom and dad, and they're going to run up these stairs with their belts ready to go. Not even realizing, brother, you was involved too. <laughs> you was involved too. Zara used to scream so loud from her room, and all Marvin Yante did was touch her doorknob. I come in at 100 miles per hour at Marviante. He's like, there you go again. This little girl right here is sowing discord amongst me and you, and she's a professional at it, and there you go again. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Let's come out of this thing now. Let's get into the nitty-gritty. Glory to God. <clears throat> Last week, we ended with this thought. We're going to pick up here today. We end it with there's always an organic consistency between the seeds of words and actions we plant in our relationships. There's always an organic consistency between the seeds of words and actions we plant in our relationships. Galatians 6 says, whatsoever you sow, you will reap. 
It may not happen right then and there in that relationship, but there's an organic consistency to it. It's happening. You let it go. I can tell you the amount of times I've had to go back and say, you know what? I didn't mean what I said right there. That was in the heat of the moment. I did not mean that. You know, and in this church, we've got senior pastors, we've got elders, we've got deacons, we've got ministers. And I told my elders in a meeting, I told them, I said, uh, I said uh, no, n- nobody is exempt from being released if you don't know how to handle the people. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. And that goes for elders, deacons, ministers. You cannot, you cannot, we say, what, we, we, the presiders come out and say, oh, we engage one another. We encourage one another. We enrich one another. We empower one another. And my God, we're tearing them up. We can't do that. We don't do that in this church, but I told him, I said, listen, that doesn't fly. You don't see me and Pastor Z do it. You've never seen me and Pastor Z storm out on nobody, make them feel like they're five years old. You've never seen us do that, and we expect you guys to do the same thing. And that goes down to the deacons. That goes down to the ministers. Nobody is expendable. If you think you're just going to harm people and rake them under the coals and treat them like they're two years old, make them feel bad, put knots in their stomach. And, 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 and I, I know it was in the heat of the moment of hospitality, but guess what? Get yourself together and say, you know, I, I didn't mean to say it like that. I, I, I don't mean it that way. Why? We're talking to adults here. And we want to carry the love of God forward. Now, we have some awesome elders. You know, and I, we, 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 we just do. We, we just do. You know, I'll never forget, I was, uh, uh, just, this is just authority and relationships. I'll never forget, uh, at, a, at our previous church, I was in Overflow, and, and one of the elders walked over there and said, hey, uh, can you go ahead and uh, turn that sound down a little bit? It's a little loud out here. And, 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 and the guy in front of everybody uh, uh, right there in the, in the media department said, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not loud. It's, it's, it's good enough. And, and she said, no, you need to turn it down. Uh, uh, it's, it's just too loud. And I'll never forget, after service, uh, uh, my pastor said, uh, can you bring him back? And you stand right there and tell him to come back here. I said, oh, boy. I said, man, alive. He brought him back. He stood it right there. And he said, look, uh, when, when, when one of these people right here walk up to anybody in the department and says, adjust this or adjust that, know this, they're not just doing it to be doing it. You need to do what they say. But what if they're wrong? If they're wrong, I will deal with them. But don't dare disrespect them in front of these people. And I'm like, man, you, man, man I'm saying to myself, man, this guy's a glue. This guy's a glue to the, to the thing. And, and, and my pastor's like, when everybody walked out, he said, you do not compromise with rebellion. He says, what I do is I cut it out. I cut it out, and God will take care of me. And I'll never forget as a minister walking out of there saying, wow, holy smokes. It is important to have order in the church because, because, because people will just run rampant. So when the elder shows up and says, hey, uh, you know, Minister Jeff, what you want to do is you may not want to hold an offering bucket uh, that long because the guys can get. To. Minister Jeff doesn't go, are you an usher? Are you an usher or a greeter? Elder Moore? No. Uh, well, you, you go ahead and adjust. And if he's wrong, Pastor Z and myself, we'll deal with it. But don't, <laughs> don't just blow him off like he's not the elder of the church. Amen? Amen. Because our elders are not dogmen. Man, our elders up with you late at night, calling you, visiting you in the hospital, praying with you, all this kind of stuff. They're not running around here uh, on witch hunts, none of that kind of stuff. These people love God. They have loving families. They're, 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 they're word-based people. They're in the word of God. They're praying, folks. And guess what? I know they don't run around trying to... Uh, 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 impose their will on the church. So when they show up and say, hey, uh, we may, we may want to just go ahead and do it, yeah. but do not embarrass them and embarrass yourself and undermine the leadership in this church. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. I don't know where that came from, but it's for somebody. So there's always an organic consistency between the seeds of words and our, our seeds of words and actions that we plant in our relationships. <clears throat> now, you got to know that in your relationships, a person has an eye gate, an ear gate, and a heart gate. Eye gate, ear gate, heart gate, in which things enter in. The hardest one to manage in relationships is eye gate. 
you're just going to see some stuff. And it's not sinful stuff. You're just going to see humanity acted out in front of you. You just, you know, you know you're just going to see humanity acted out in front of you. If they invited you to the barbecue and they're trying to get everything together and, and they're trying to get the pool heated up for the thing, so on and so forth, and the husband turns to the wife and says, hey, did you turn the, the pool on at 2 o'clock? I, I needed the water warm for No, I didn't. My God, you didn't turn it on. You got it. Nah, man, what's going on? And she goes, well, did you get the hot dogs from all this? I, I didn't get the hot dogs from all this. My God, I'm trying to do this. Now you want me hey, just, just go, ahead, go ask Marviante to do it. And boy, your eye gate sees that. And you go, boy, pastor, he really don't walk in love, do he? Are you crazy? <laughs> I do walk in love. That's just a human interaction. And if you've ever had to put on a birthday party for a little one and somebody drops the ball, <laughs> your eye gate is going to see some stuff. And we got to learn to, we got to learn to manage that as, 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 as believers because God does not want us judging a person's life just off our eye gates. Your ear gates, you're going to hear some stuff. Here's the funny part. Your eye gates hear stuff, and their eye gates. Uh, your eye gates see stuff, and their eye gates see stuff. You know, your ear gates is going to hear some stuff. I'm quite sure Marviante and Zaria has heard me and their mother having disagreements in the kitchen. Derek, did you, did you wash that pepper before you cut it? No, I, I, don't, I don't wash the outside. I, I cut it. I put it in the strainer, then I wash it. No, I, I need to wash before you start cutting it. My God, I, I, do you want to cook today or what? I mean, I, and it's like, man alive. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they've heard that. But guess what? They got to be able to manage that relationship knowing the only one that will amplify flaws in their eyes and ears is the enemy. Flaws of who? Their parents. Your kids see you at your weakest point. Your kids see your weakness. You know, you bring in people around you at an intimate setting, they're going to see you at your weakest point sometimes. And guess what? If they're spies, they're going to use it against you. They're going to use it against you. Because they, the, 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 a pride for heart that sees a vulnerability of humanity in the heat of the moment, they're going to use it against you. And guess what? Now all of a sudden, you're not so spiritual. Now all of a sudden, you know, we thought you were. Now all of a sudden, I can't believe you can't believe. You guys do the same thing. Nobody sees you, though. So our eye gates, our ear gate, and our heart gate, this is the big one. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. And in, in your relationships, in our relationships, we have to guard our hearts with all diligence. With all diligence. With all diligence. <clears throat> I'm going to be sharing a, a lot of stories uh, just, just in ministry, I, I never forget sitting down at, at, at the board table there, and somebody made a statement, and my pastor looked at them, and he said, you willing to stand by that? That's a strong accusation you're making. In other words, my heart is wide open in this room, and you better manage what you say in here about a person of that caliber. Are you willing to stand by that? I said, yeah, I'm willing to stand by it. I'm just telling you. What was he saying? Hearts are open in this room. Hearts are open in this room. The Bible says guard your heart with all diligence, but when you get around people that you just you fully trust, you can drop that thing down. And when you're in those kind of meetings, you can't just be saying stuff to be saying stuff. You got to hear from God when you open up your mouth and say that. Because he asked them, are you willing to stand by that? That's a strong accusation you're making right there. What was he teaching us? Guard your heart with all diligence and guard your mouth when you're around people because you can disrupt the entire generation with seeds in that relationship. You can disrupt the entire household. You can disrupt a man of God or a woman, woman of the will of God over their life. You can disrupt it with the seeds coming out of your mouth into their heart. Why? They trust you. It's a covenant relationship. And we got to respect that in our relationships and not release seeds of, watch this, what, what Proverbs 6 says, seeds of discord in those relationships. Woo, give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. We said this earlier uh, in, in the teaching, people are starving for relationships, scared, scared of relationships, while others are enjoying, are enjoying their relationships. <clears throat> They're enjoying their relationships. And let me tell you when you enjoy your relationships. You enjoy your relationships when God is at the center of it and you're not. 
That's what the world means when they say self-centered. We got to get our relationships God-centered. When God is at the center of our relationships, we enjoy. Why? Because you got to serve now. You got to be patient. You got to have long suffering. You got to be meek. You got to be gentle. You got to be loving. You got to be kind. You got to be all of that because God is at the center of that relationship. Now, if you have your Bibles, uh, let's see here. Glory to God. <clears throat> All right. Last week we talked about giving and sacrifice, and we went to John 3, 16, where God gave his only begotten son uh, uh, so that we may be free. That was giving. That was, sac- that was a sacrifice. In relationships, you, you got to know that inherent in that thing. You're going to have to give. You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to give. You're going to have to sacrifice. And we gave an example earlier, uh, uh, last Sunday, early in the message. Listen, it's not always the mom's job to pick the kids up. You got to sacrifice. You, you, you got to sacrifice. It's not always, you know, the husband's job to do X, Y, and Z. You got, you got to sacrifice. That's going to keep the relationship healthy. You, you got to be willing to give in the relationship. Taking, 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 taking. Oh, my God, our marriage is over the top. But you're a taker? It's not over the top. You're just getting your way. We got to give and sacrifice. Uh, uh, so God gave his only begotten son. So, so, so the, the father and son have certain traits that we need to pull from in their relationships. We talked about validation. Matthew 3, 17. He says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus, he came up out of the water. And God says, that's my son, and I'm very pleased with him. Validation is a big thing. Validation in relationships is a big thing. We have to validate our children. We have to validate our spouses. We have to validate our covenant relationships, our intercourse, our, 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 our holy of holies. Our, we, we have to validate people. How do you validate people? You validate people by complimenting what's good about them, complimenting what you appreciate about them. Validation. Validation. You know, a kid can make straight A's from pre-K all the way. Well, well, let me change the pre-K because somebody told me. They said, hey, d- during, during that COVID thing, we thought we was little homeschoolers. We was excited the first two or three weeks trying to homeschool this, that, and the other, and work this, that, and the other. And they said, we figured out we are not school teachers. This stuff is like, this stuff is for Elon Musk. I don't know what I'm doing. I, it, my God. And she said, and the husband said, we found a pre, pre-K for our son. I said, a pre, pre-K? Oh, yeah. Pre, pre-K, we found it for him. And he might have been three years old or whatever. We, we, we found that school for him. And I was like, a pre, pre-K? And I was like, man, look at that. I, 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 you, 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 so you can have him in pre, pre-K all the way up to college, and you can pound academics in them, but you never lay your hand on your shoulder and say, I'm so proud of the gift that God has placed in you in this area right here. Do you understand nobody in this house can do what you do? Do you understand when it's tight in this house and people are, you are the life of this house, your personality brings life to this house? Do you understand that? You know, regardless of what they say out of there, say out there, I want you to know that you are a special person to us and you're special to God. That's validation. That's validation. That's validation. And we, let me tell you who's terrible at validation. Men. Men are afraid to pick up the phone and just say, Hey, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. And man, what you did right here, I just want you to know that, 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 you, that you are a man of God. You're a good man, so on and so forth, and I really appreciate you. Men are terrible at that. You know why? The first thing a man wants to know is, what do you do for a living? When they stand around and talk, what do you do for a living? How, many, how much money do you make? What school did you go to? All prideful stuff. And I forget the guy, was it, um, uh, was it Keith Ledger? Is that his name? The prank, the joker? What's his name? Heath, 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 Heath Ledger. I've never given, he said, man, people want to know about your car, your house, and all that stuff, and, and where you go to school, and this, that, and the other. He said, but nobody ever asked me, are you happy? He killed himself. <clears throat> because we're so focused in relationships on this right here. Do I have an up on you? And God says, none of that junk is going to matter. You didn't bring nothing into this world. You're not going to take nothing out. You better get busy in being rich in your relationships. 
when you've got to make a phone call for five or six or ten people to show up, let me tell you something, you better be able to do that. And the only way you can do that is you've been sowing seeds of appreciation and validation, and they will show up with no problem. Instead of saying, well, shoot, that, they never call me, text me what? Uh, drop everything? Uh, I don't know about that. Here's what I know. I've dropped everything for people. We've dropped everything for people. We've, we've, we've done that before. So I know we have seeds in the ground of validation with our kids and with other folks, but validation has to be present in our relationships according to Matthew 3, 17. Commitment. We talked about commitment. When Jesus talked about it in Luke 2, 49, he says, listen, I don't know what you guys think I'm on, but I'm all about my father's business. He was committed to the original intent. Man, if you got a father-in-law, uh, you know, hanging around or staying with you or mother-in-law staying with you, they need to know, look, I'm committed. Johnny, that's my daddy. Johnny, whatever she says in this house, I'm committed to that. Boy, you don't, man, you don't, have you lost it, son? No, I ain't, I ain't lost it. You, you, you're here for 30 days. I'm going to revere you, honor you, and respect you. But what she says goes, I'm committed to the original intent because you're going to be going back up 95 and I'm going to be here with the original intent trying to sort stuff out and you're going to be in the center of the conversation because you didn't know how to be quiet. You didn't know how to cook the way she wanted you to cook. You kept messing with the thermostat. You kept thinking that you ran the house and you didn't run. Look, I'm committed to the original intent of our relationship, which is one flesh. I'm committed to that. Regardless of who stays with us, I'm committed to that. And she's the same way. You know, her sisters can't come down and say, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it this way. No, 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 no. Derek don't like it like that. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that you're going to allow him to, to, to not wash those vegetables the way we did all our lives, and he's going to cut them up and then wash them in the strainer? You're going to let him do that? You know what she's going to say? Absolutely. She's committed to the original intent of that relationship. What is that? I honor my wife. I honor my husband. But so much ruckus and turmoil can be kicked up when old daddy tried to come in there and run the house. I know it's thick up in here right now. I told you it was going to get thick. <laughs> when mama tried to run the house, now I got to navigate between mama and, 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 and Zelfia. When daddy tried to run the house, now she got to navigate between, between uh, 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 Derek and, and, and daddy. And, she, she, and, it's, and it's, like, it's like it's too stressful. Just know this. Make your pack before you get there. Listen, come hell or high water, we're one. Do you understand that? We're one now. now we're going we're to treat them, we're going to blow their minds. But let's, just, let's, let's, let's establish this right now. We're one. Zarya still goes to bed at 9 o'clock. Okay? She got to get up in the morning. Because grandmama come in there and try to change everything. We love grandmama. She cooked for us, all that kind of stuff. But grandmama, we, we got a little system here. We're committed to the original intent. Boy, stick up in here, but I tell you what is right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Mark, Mark 14. We're talking about relationships. And our model right now is Jesus and the, and the Father. Well, uh, yeah, Mark 14. Glory to God. You're going to feel so good if you just let go. <laughs> just let go and let God. <clears throat> now, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane, and it's like, you know, we're going to really see an interaction with him and the Father. We're going to really see that and see what happens. And this example, this is, the, this is an example of long suffering in relationships. Long suffering. I'm not talking about being taken advantage of. I'm talking about long suffering. <clears throat> Mark 14, verse 36. And Jesus said <clears throat> during this time, He says, Abba Father, all things are possible unto him. Please take this cup away from me. It was rough. Now he knew it was coming. He knew the death, the burial, the rest. He knew that was coming, but man, it just got thick. And he cries out, he said, Listen, take this cup. Away from me. 
long suffering. In relationships, it gets rough sometimes. It's like, why do I got to make this phone call? Why do I got to say this? Man alive. Just take this cup away from me. And, 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 and look at this. He says, watch this now. Watch the commitment back to the original tent. But nevertheless, not what I want or I will, but it's what you want. I'm going back to, 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 to uh, Daddy Johnny. Daddy Johnny said, uh, uh, son, I hear you got a house in Tennessee. I said, yeah, I got one in Tennessee, too. Uh, you going to be up there? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be up there for uh, uh, the month of December, just kind of hanging out there. Uh, do you mind if I come up there? Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, you, yeah, 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 you can come on up there. You, you, you can come on up there and uh, kind of hang out. And uh, we get up there and we hang out for Christmas or whatever it is, and we get ready to go, and I say, hey, uh, let's go ahead and pack up. We got to lock up. He goes, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stay here for another four or six months. <laughs> yeah, but you, uh, <laughs> we're on a certain budget now. If you stay here, the gas bill, the electric bill, all that kind of stuff, well, I figured you got it, son. My God. I said, well, psh, man, God, go, go ahead and bless him. Pastor Z says, go ahead and bless him. And let him. By month five, the bills are rolling in. The pictures are up on Facebook. It's not just him. It's, 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 it's other, other folks he inviting up there. They're going up on Facebook. We're looking at it. And now all of a sudden, I'm in the background going, I got to say something. God have mercy, how do I say this? Oh, I just got a text from him. He may be ready to leave. So on, 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 on second thought, I tell you what, another three months will really do my soul good. God to almighty, how am I going to tell him he's got to get out of there? I'm ready for him to go. My Lord, he's got to get out. This is long suffering. I got to make this phone call. I, this is just too much for me. I can't handle this. It's bringing strife in our finances. My wife is trying to figure out why her sister in law can't go up there for her 10th anniversary, and you're occupying the space. And I got to keep telling her that you just feel like nature's ministering to you, and I need you out of there. And, and, I, and, and, and now I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to. Jesus was sweating blood, it's coming out of his pores. That's long suffering. And sometimes in relationships, you got to have those hard conversations. And you're not less of God if it takes you two weeks to have it. You're trying to gather the right words, but it's long suffering in the pro process because you understand, you, you, you're hoping, uh, you know, Pastor Z is hoping that Derek understands when I come to him and say, it's time for dad to go. I'm, I'm, she just didn't do that off the cuff. She's thought about it for three weeks. And I'm telling you, if you're married, your spouse can come to you with something, and the Holy Spirit will tell you, they just didn't start thinking about this now. They're not just trying to trip you up now. There's been some long suffering with this right here. You better pause, and you better pay attention to what he or she is ready to say to you. When people leave stuff off like this, with all due respect, Okay, they've, they've, they've thought about this. That's, that's a good way to lead it off. With all due respect, you know, I respect you, honor you, so on and so forth. But man, I love you to pieces. We've been married 24 years, going on 25. But whew, it's just time for him to go. I think we've done what God has instructed us to do. And uh, honestly, uh, you talked about no sophistication in prayers. I don't want to pay the bills no more uh, while he's up there. Okay. All right. So when are you going to talk to him, Derek? Gosh, I guess I can, I guess I can, I can go in and call him. Man, ah. how many people know that's long suffering in that relationship? Long suffering is not I'm gathering myself to whack him across the head or insult him. Long suffering is I got to deliver this thing in love and in truth and keep the relationship intact. But more importantly, I got to honor my wife. Nevertheless, Jesus said, it's not my will but your will be done. He was committed to that. He had long suffering in that relationship. And, and I'm telling you, relatives, when they begin to think they have an up on your spouse, you got to bring them back. Come on, come on back down to earth. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Well, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter said, I could, <laughs> I'll never forget, 15 years ago, my daughter says, okay, to smoke while I'm visiting y'all. I said, I'll tell you what, March right on that patio, 
and, you, and you, it's chairs out there, patio furniture, and you can smoke right there, my Lord, but you're not going to smoke in here. Well, okay then. <laughs> okay then. All right. And what was she saying? Well, wait till Z gets here, and we'll just see about that. Well, guess what, Z came. And I know it was rough for Z. And she was like, nah, you're right, you, 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 can't, you can't smoke in the house. Oh, Whew. Woo! When, when the end of the heat of the night come on? I, I got to get to my show. <laughs> Two days down here already, I'm stressed out. No, you're not stressed out. You're, just, you're, just, you're trying to have your way in a setting where you got two people committed to the original intent, and guess what? It's going to be long-suffering for me to tell you this or for Z to pull you to the side and tell you that, but it's going to be for the health of the relationship. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> I ain't going to ask you how many people got relatives, you know, that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to even ask that question. Luke 22. You know, God forbid we, we, we have fun in church, and God forbid we be real. You can shout, speak in tongues all day long, but boy, if you're going home to, and, 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 and it's stressed out, and, 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 and it's $2,200 a month for that cabin up there, and, 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 and he's just hanging out with his feet up, and every, every four hours is a Facebook post and Instagram post, and my wife is like, my God, we got to pay this again? Boy, you better get yourself together. I can't even imagine. If, if my mom was living, I can't imagine how hard it would be. If mama's in one room, and my wife's in the other room, and mama's like, and my wife is like, I just say, Cal, go and take me away. <laughs> just get me up out of here. This is just too doggone much for me. And you know, another trait for healthy relationships is servanthood. Somebody say servanthood. servanthood. You gotta be willing to go down and, 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 and lift. Your per- the other person up, the another that the Bible talks about. When it says love one another, you got to be willing to go down and lift them up, enrich them. Servanthood is very key to a healthy relationship. Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 24. Now, right here, the disciples, <clears throat> the disciples, you know, Jesus is basically, basically let them know, now, one of you guys are going to betray me. One of you guys are going to betray me. It's really just that simple. And one thing about relationships, I want, I, want, I want to drop this in your spirit. Betrayal is inherent in relationships. If it happened to Jesus, there's a possibility it can happen to you. It happened to him. Judas betrayed him. Peter betrayed him. So don't, don't, don't let that stop you from engaging in the love of God in relationships because betrayal is, 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 is a part of it. You've seen it throughout the scripture. But, but Luke 22, Jesus is kind of letting them know, you know, know what's, what's up uh, uh, about one of them uh, betraying him. And I want to pick up uh, in verse 24. And there was also strife among them, which of them should be accounted for the greatest. So the disciples are trying to figure out, well, which one of us are, 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 are the leader here? Which one of us? Who's leading this thing? You know, one's going to betray. He's talking about one's going to betray. He's talking in code and all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and which, so which one is it? Verse 25. And he said unto them, the kings and the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Watch this. Verse 26. But you shall not be so. This is Jesus teaching us about servanthood. But he that is the greatest among you, let him be as a younger, and he that is chief as he that does serve. For whether is greater, watch this, he that sitteth at the meat or he that serveth, which one of those is greater? It's not the one that sits to eat, but I am among you as he that serves. There has to be a servanthood component for every relationship to be healthy. It has to be. You have to serve. I never forget one time, you know, when, when Zaria Marviante was little, I caught on to this. I caught on to this. I could come home and I could see the, the stress on my wife's face from those kids. And I knew and they were still running around, still wanting things, still wanting to eat, help me with my homework, all this kind of stuff. And she's like, man, I tell you what, you better get them. She didn't have to say that because my heart was to serve her. And I said, hey, uh, but, but let, let, let's go for a minute. Let's go. Let's get out of here. 
But that mommy, mommy ain't going. Mommy is going to stay here. I got to get her away. I got to get y'all away from her. What was that? Servanthood. We'll be going for the next two hours. But that two hours at Chick-fil-A, I tip my hat to my wife. At two hours at McDonald's Playland, I just, I just, tip, I just, I just, I just tipped the two. I, I, hey, hey, get down. I'm like, well, wash your hands. Hey, your food getting cold. Come and eat. Who, who is that you talking to over there? Hey, get, 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 get down. Hey, stop yelling. You're not, you're not outside. Man, I was like, good God. And, and she's dealing with this all day long. You have got to get an element of servanthood in that relationship. And it's not just husband and wife. It's, 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 it's child and parents. You got to know that your parents are working hard, trying hard during this COVID. You got to say, you know what, mom? I got the dishes. I got the dishes. I have the dishes. You know, hey, dad, I got the trash. I got, I'm, I'm taking the trash out now. I'm 10 years old. I can take the trash out. I got the trash. Just show them how to do it. That's going to be my little job. You got to get a servanthood component to all relationships. Now, here's the thing about servanthood. There's three, there's three parts in a relationship. If you're in a relationship with a girlfriend or a covenant brother or whatever that is, l- 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 let me let you in on something. You got to be accountable. You got to be responsible. And if you're accountable and responsible, guess what you're going to be? Predictable. And you'll be picking them up at the airport. But if you're not accountable, <laughs> you're not responsible. Oh, you're predictable, all right. You're not going to show up on time. I'm not going to call you to pick the kids up from daycare to keep from paying that extra $50. I'm going to call the person that's been highly predictable in my life. That's who I'm going to call. And guess what? That person has a servanthood heart. I'm a servant at heart. I really am. I like to see the smile on my wife's face. And we recently learned our relationship. She said, Derek, when you turn on your servant hat and you surprise me with goodness, Everything is okay. But when I say one thing about the food you cooked or the clothes you folded or the clothes you washed, you get offensive. She said, she said one thing about you, 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 she said, you'd like to see me light up. She said, but I can't, I can't ask you, did you wash these dark clothes on cold? I can't ask you that. I said, why you feel you can't ask me that? She said, because... As long as you're giving a surprise and there's no questions and, I, and I'm just goo goo ga ga, it's okay. But the minute I say, how much this cost? Look, don't worry about the money now. Just enjoy the thing. You still got the receipt. I got, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get my heart lifted up here and you won't even, and it's like, man, you're not serving, Derek. <laughs> you're not serving? You're not serving at all like that. Because a servanthood in that, a servant in that relationship says, you know what, I think I might have washed my warm. You want me to rewash them on cold? I got it. I got it. Okay? Uh, your plate is fixed. Uh, did you rinse the plate out before? Uh, yeah, I've rinsed it out. I know exactly how you like it. Servanthood has got to be in that relationship. You know your homeboy's got a birthday coming up. You call, him up, you call up the wife and go, what do you need from me? What do, you, what, what do you mean? Well, I, I know you're doing something. It's just, just what, what, what do you need? I never, ne- to this day, Larry Wilson, which is my covenant brother, to this day, he's going to bless me on my birthday. To this day, he's going to say, you, you good over there? You, you need anything? You need me to, you, you, just, I'm, I'm just, you're just checking in. To this day. That's a covenant relationship. And every relationship, covenant relationship, has to have some kind. you got to find some kind of servanthood component. Yeah. I'll be cleaning out my garage. This, 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 this. Well, I'll come over there and help you. Shoot. Man, i got to put this. Well, I'll come over there and help you. Just, just let me know. you, you got to have it. you, you got to have that. Otherwise, you'll find yourself in a relationship where it's, where it's, it's just, it's really not a covenant relationship. It's a, it's a, I'm just trying to see if I got one up on you. I got one upon you. No, we should be serving one another the way Jesus told the disciples <clears throat> to serve. Amen. Whew, glory to God. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, Jesus. <sighs> I want you to write this down. Uh, and, you know, don't take this the wrong way. 
My gosh. Don't take this the wrong way when I'm ready to, ready to drop on you here. It's good, it's good though. Boy, I can taste those greens right now. <clears throat> Where are you at? Oh, there it is. Next thought. <clears throat> then you got all you got, you got to catch this now. <laughs> always improve on nurturing in your relationships. Always improve on nurturing an atmosphere where relationship equity is highly valued. Relationship equity is highly valued. Always work on improving that atmosphere where relationship equity is highly valued. <laughs> You, you, when you have a high relationship equity, you cannot treat life events lightly. You know that's his 20th anniversary. Where were you at? <laughs> Did you bless him? Did you bless her? You know it was his or her 40th birthday covenant relationship, relationship equity. Did you bless them? Did you show some kind of appreciation to boost the relationship equity? Let me tell you something. This may hurt a lot of you. <laughs> when you start to go back through your life and go, well, that was a big life event, so what? Man, good Lord. We should always be working to nurture an atmosphere just to bolster relationship equity, protect that relationship equity, build that relationship equity. When you stand up there and you're saying I do and you look to the right at your groomsmen, those guys you're looking at, those are your role models, those are the guys that's going to be there when it gets rough, those are the guys that's going to be there that say, no, man, you, no, 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 I don't want to hear what she ain't doing. You are in a covenant. You are married to her. Listen, those guys and those gals, what you're saying is, I'm making one of the highest covenant a human being can make, and these people on each side of me have demonstrated relationship equity in my life. You have to value that. And the question is, as believers, do we, you know, it boggles my mind when a person can throw away a 10-year relationship and call it awful and get in a one-month relationship and call it awesome. That scares me. Oh, so, 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 <laughs> so, okay. So in 10 years, all of what we had was awful. And in two months, the girlfriend you just met, or the guy you just met, or whatever it is, in two months, you know everything about that relationship in two months, and you call it awesome. Truth be told, in 10 years, you're going to do them the same way. If you can just cast off that kind of equity and just, just cast it to the side, why? Because you don't, you, don't, you don't create an atmosphere that nurtures and values relationship equity. There's been plenty of times in my life as a man where, I, where my wife would be frustrated, this one took advantage of me, or that one, and, and, then, and man, she gets to go, and I say, oh, 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 easy. My gosh. <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> This is 16 years. Easy. I can see how. I could have. I can see why. They may be thinking. I can see where I could have. But just, just, just hold on. What am I doing? I'm, 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 I'm protecting and valuing that atmosphere where I nurture uh, 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 that relationship equity. But if I just let her keep going, if she just lets me keep going, let me tell you something. The people closest to you can tear down a 10-year, 12-year, 15 relationship in one conversation. And they do it, they do it by sowing the seed of suspicion of character. Beware of that person. Next thought. God called us to live a value consistent life. We gotta place value on relationships and stay consistent with it. We gotta place value on relationships and stay consistent with it. 
And we got to be consistent, a value consistent life. I value you. I value you. I value your help. I value what you're doing. I value you being here. I value you sacrifice. I value you. I, I, I value consistent life. Why is it so important? Because if we don't have a value consistent life, like a, a life principle to live a value consistent life, here's what happens. Everybody is a, is, 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 is a possibility to be casted off. You don't value nothing. We don't value help. We don't value kind words. We don't value phone calls out of the blue. We don't value text out of the blue. We don't value a simple card. We don't value nothing. So guess what? Nobody means nothing to you. My pastor looked at me one time and said, I want to tell you something. Regardless of what you think, <laughs> life is long. Your human heart will get lonely. It's long because all of the excitement is going to die down. He's there like Braille curves. You're going to find yourself here one day, and you're going to want value consistent people in your life at that time. You're going to want value consistent people walking through that door. You're going to want value consistent people picking up that phone to check on you. Know this. So nurture an atmosphere that values that. Are you still out there? Yeah. <clears throat> Glory to God. We said this last week. In relationships, you as a person, you got to find out who you are. Half of knowing who you are is knowing who you are not. We said this last week. Knowing who you're not. Man, if you're not the picker-up phoner and you're the texter, you better establish that right up front with the person. Man, I'm not a good caller. I'm not one who checks my email 45 times a day now. That ain't me. I'm definitely not one to be texting me and asking me, asking me why I didn't like no picture. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't check it like that. So please don't call me asking me why didn't I say this or ask that. Don't do that because I don't check that mess. And it ain't no measurement stick for you and I or like a reaction emoji with shades on. That ain't nothing. Call me. Let me know what's up. What's up, man? Let's get something to eat. Oh, okay, cool. But just because I didn't throw up the happy birthday does not mean that I don't forgot about you now. Matter of fact, check your cash out. Now, you want that or do you want a little thumb up? <laughs> so I know who I'm not. I, just, I, I, know, I, 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 I know who I'm not. <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. God, have mercy. Somebody give me an amen up in here. Amen. <laughs> uh, that is it for today. Were well, you blessed by the word of God? <laughs>